Very happy to see you in person after a two years break and many familiar faces. Uh, today, uh, Jeff, Rick, and I are going to uh, present you this uh, a project we have been working on uh, for, for a couple of years. Um, uh, I think if you read the, the, uh, uh, the abstract, it's starting in uh, 2019. But if, but if you really, uh, uh, going back to 2017, uh, from the library perspective, we're trying to take it as a uh, research and development project. It's really learning and staff development from our technical folks to understand how to uh, talk to the uh, APIs uh, provided by our uh, vended databases and also trying to enrich the metadata for uh, ND authors, uh, particularly for the STEM theories. Um, and the, third, the third, third goal was really trying to create a, a somewhat a authority control for the ND authors, uh, particularly for uh, article uh, authors. Uh, we're thinking if we can create one uh, authority control for Notre Dame, probably there will be uh, scalability across the old colleges and libraries, they will be able to create it for their uh, uh, institution authors as, as well. So back in 2017, uh, the provost office uh, already understand the library is the, the only uh, knowledge uh, or, or organization on campus. So they came to uh, the library asking whether we can support the university effort to really gauge uh, the scholar, scholarly impact of our professors and researchers. Uh, we start the conversation from there, so they know this is a really a side project we're working on. There's only a team, and we're sort of testing the instructor, the technology, uh, sort of learning our ropes. So, uh, so a year after, uh, the provost office connect us with the Office of Research. Uh, they have a more defined goal, trying to gauge the scholarly output of the centers and institute report through the, the Office of Research. Uh, that's really the origin of this, uh, this project. Uh, the project started in 2019 uh, uh, through phase one, and we just completed phase two uh, over the summer. Uh, you know, from the university uh, leadership perspective, they like to really accurately to, uh, to gauge uh, the scholarly impact. Um, the, the data often uh, provided uh, through uh, several methods, but they're not uh, very accurate. Uh, particularly, they, if they want to have a longitude study about the, the scholar impact, uh, they would like to have a more ultimate uh, fashion to uh, getting the data in and store them so then we can uh, get, get, get a holistic picture. So one thing uh, we actually learned, there's, there's, there's impossible, you just 100% ultimate the process. Someone has to be in the, in the middle of it, make sure uh, the metadata we get from uh, the vendors need to be massaged and also need to be uh, normalized and also need to map with the, uh, the, the university uh, sort of organization structure. Uh, every university is a bit different in terms of how we sort of stru structure our colleges, department, and our uh, disciplines. Uh, from the Center Institute uh, perspective, uh, it's the annual process. Uh, it, it, they have probably start several months before the deadline. They have to coordinate the process uh, throughout uh, many colleges. Uh, as, a, as a Center and Institute, all their fellows actually reporting through several colleges, several departments. In some instances, there are also fellows coming from uh, our you know, peer institution a, as well. Uh, it's very hard for them to, uh, to get in a, a clear picture without having uh, their staff and faculty to go through the entire uh, uh, publication to make sure what should be assigned to their center or not. Uh, if, you, if you will, uh, you take a look across all the centers, often from the Office of Research perspective, they see a lot of duplications uh, from the re reports coming in across the centers because uh, the, the faculty often assigned to multiple centers. Uh, so really for us, uh, you know, this is not a normal uh, a faculty profile project. We really have to differentiate, have an, another lens uh, to, uh, to understand uh, our local uh, structure, uh, who's reporting uh, where, and, and that uh, uh, metadata needs to be uh, uh, enriched uh, from our, our uh, perspective. 
And that's, that's really the part uh, we do uh, from the library perspective. First, talk to the APIs, uh, and then we have our technical uh, services folks uh, to do the, the first uh, review. Uh, make sure the, they are actu accurately assigned to the right center, and, and over time, uh, we'll have a more uh, accurate uh, picture uh, deter to determine uh, who we should harvest from, from where. Um, uh, the phase one starting with the one center and the Harper uh, Cancer Research Center. Uh, this is a really, really complex situation. Uh, Harper is a very good test case uh, when we start phase one because uh, we, you know, Notre Dame have a pre-med degree. We don't have a medical school. So our center uh, fellows, they are actually coming from multiple departments, mathematics, computer science, biology, chemistry. <laughs> And then also we have a collaboration with IU uh, Medical School. So it's really, uh, that gave a very, uh, very complex situation we had to solve and think how that map into our, our center uh, from, from the, the center perspective. So it's really a learning experience for us. Uh, by the end of uh, uh, the phrase one, and that's their uh, associate uh, director sort of comment about our pi the first phase of pilot. From there, we're moving to phase two, uh, where we start uh, in supporting all the seven uh, centers uh, from, from the Office of Research. And this is a, another a testimony from ND Energy. Uh, I'm going to stop here and ask Rick to, to, uh, to give uh, you a, a demo. Sure, so, so I'm very excited to, to be here. This is like coming home since the last conference I was at was two years ago at CNI in December. So. Very excited to be here. Uh, so so as, as John has been alluding to, the one, one of the interesting things about this project is that it's not just about author disambiguation, it's also about doing that next layer of discernment where you look to see which publications are not just written by this particular author, but which ones of their 20, 30 publications apply to this center that they're a part of. And as John mentioned, many of these uh, members of the centers are members of Multiple, I think the average is two or three of all the ones that we have seen in the pilot group. So it's, that's one big uh, complex aspect of that. So thinking about the human loop portion, uh, it, what we've really focused on is trying to make sure that we let the machines do what they do well, but then let people do what they do as well, and, and, and really trying to match those things together. So there is some immediate harvesting, data processing, uh, confidence calculation of sorts to try to trim back the large volume that may be coming from these various, so for, for example, from some of these sources, the amount of results could be in the tens of thousands, depending on uh, how well the query is tuned or how many results are, are returned. So we have this step where we pulled in and then there's a, a portion where a human does an actual review of sorts. In terms of the data coming in, these are the sources that we're pulling from and, and you know, John talked about uh, how across these various sources, there's varying degrees of information. It, it's, it's what we have seen is that just from record to record, it's inconsistent in terms of how much, how, how much the record is populated, and then also how much they are there. So, so we've worked hard to try to combine uh, data from multiple sources as well. So with the tool, uh, there's kind of the, the typical uh, login via the campus authentication system. And then once you're in, we get to the step now where we have one a step where we do the author disambiguation step and the library does that portion where they look to see, okay, is it, do they accept it, reject it? We're able to pull in a lot of information here where you can see the various sources, uh, open the article via various links, you can do UI. So this is a portion here where it's been brought in and then the person is looking at this and they're able to see very quickly whether this article actually applies to you know, this particular author, not uh, na way. Now, we can see that, yes, it's obvious that it lists Notre Dame when you click on her, but that information is not coming to us in the metadata. So it's these kinds of things where there's interfaces like this that are built for people to interact that are, you know, very easy to use, but in terms of the computer trying to look at information, it's just not there consistently. So that's why a big reason we built in that particular portion. So once uh, the... And there's another aspect here that you know I, I talked a little bit about uh, confidence calculation. So, in terms of trying to 
push down the articles that really are not applicable, that are still coming back from various queries to these sources, we built in these confidence measures where it's looking at last name, initial uh, affiliation, et cetera. And a big part of doing that was it really helped us, as I'll show later on in terms of numbers, it helped us cut more than half of the, of the sources coming in. So once uh, the library does their portion, so again, the library being uh, providing that uh, authoritative role in the process to say we have confirmed that yes, these publications are for these people, then that's when it gets to the next step in the process where the centers are involved in doing the review themselves. And they say, okay, well, these, I see these publications are confirmed for these people. Now I'm going to check which ones actually apply. And in terms of the tools that we built in, again, we have that link to go directly to the publication, but the, instead of looking at the person, now they're focusing on the abstract portion. And that's looking to see which parts of these apply. So in this particular case, it's looking at the Institute for Precision Health, and that was where we just looked at the abstract to see what would be applicable there. Now, I talked a bit about already about how many of these researchers are part of multiple centers. So this is an example of one where you have an article that was accepted for, uh, I think it was for Harper Cancer Research Institute, uh, Professor Chen. But then when you look at another center that he's a part of, ND Nano, does that apply or not? So what, and in this case, the, what we'll see in a second is it doesn't apply. And, and this was something that was pretty important that we could simultaneously accept and reject for different centers and that would not affect anything. And, and one of the things that I've, I've consistently been telling our participants in the pilot is by rejecting this, you're not saying that Danny Chen didn't write this article, yes, that's confirmed. You're just saying that it doesn't apply to this particular center or institute. Then there were definitely some cases that we heard uh, within the process. So the folks primarily doing the center review are administrators, managing directors within the centers and institutes. And they kind of do that first pass, but there's usually a subset where they're not totally sure which ones actually apply. So we built in a mechanism here to be able to filter down to which ones that were pending, then do a download. I'll let this cycle through again so you can see that. And we're able to kind of sort and filter uh, by the pending, by the counts to make it easy for them to see those things. Then once they do the download here and open that up, then they're able to send that list to whoever, potentially the researchers themselves. We had found that going back to Excel, Google Sheets, it just can't be duplicated. It, 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 meant, it ended up being more effort than was necessary to try to duplicate what this was doing. So we fell, fell back to the standard tools that everyone has, everyone can use, everyone can access. Uh, for this portion of the process, and then they, they go through and confirm, okay, which ones apply, and send it back to those folks, and then they go into the tool and enter those in. Now, in addition to the review, so once, once the, all the information has been entered, we built in a reporting dashboard here, and this is kind of thinking about, these are more of the library leadership, executive university leadership that we're looking at these, and there's the ability here to do various filtering uh, filtering down to the center, going to the particular author. Again, you can download the results and take a look at that. Here's kind of a view of what that is. So it's really whatever is in view in a particular filter, that's what gets downloaded. So if it could be all, it could be a subset. Then in addition to that, within the dashboard, you also kind of have a larger view of, of that where you can go through and filter, and we have another piece in here where it shows uh, co-author uh, collaboration networks, and you see kind of what it looks like as it's gradually filtering down to just the, the author filter, then down to the, in this case, the anti-energy, and then in a second it's going to update uh, to be kind of that full set of collaborations that, that are there. Okay, so looking at uh, some of these raw numbers, so Overall, for 315 total authors you see in the middle there, 
we harvested uh, a little over 8,000 possible matches. And by, when I was talking about the confidence, by doing that initial cut, we were able to filter that down to 3,500. And one important distinction there, if you notice, there's another line there that talks about distinct publications. What we did there is we considered author and publication matches as a pair, unique pair, in addition to just pulling down publications. Because in many cases, we had publications where there were you know, 20 authors. And one was a very confident match with some of the center, and then another is a more tentative. So they might have someone on the paper that has the same last name uh, and even same initial as someone in there. Uh, one other thing that we found was that uh, we have set kind of the bar as kind of last name, first initial, but we also added a step to tune this a little bit more to push some publication matches below the line if it was a first initial match, but the actual given name was present and was not a match. So like if a person looks at that, they say, of course, that's not them. But the computer was saying, well, no, we still think this is 50%. So that was part, a big part of allowed, what allowed us to do that. Then looking at uh, kind of these raw numbers of distinct publications, so of the amount that was harvested, the ones that were confirmed as matching at least one author, many cases, you know, two, three authors, depending, you know, as you can imagine, the many of the collaborations across these centers, they're all working together on various projects. Uh, then it, it kind of looking at those adjusted percentage to, to explain that a little bit. So if you look at the third line affiliated with center, that 70% number, that is 934 out of 1300. So it's saying, okay, now that I've gone to that step, 70% of those were then affiliated. If you look at the overall that were harvested, it was about 40% of those. Okay, so I think we managed to move through this pretty quickly because we wanted to, to have a lot of time for discussion uh, to, to really hear uh, what your thoughts are after hearing more about what we're doing. Uh, we're really very interested in seeing if there's any potential partners, even to use just a piece of what we have done. Uh, we, we know there's, there's similar tools and processes out there that various folks have already done. And we, we think what we've done here is, is interesting and, and we wanted to hear more of your thoughts. So I'll pause there and we actually have uh, Jeff Spees on the line here. So we'll see if we can pull him in over Zoom. Okay, so are there any, any questions? Yeah, if have? you have a question, probably it speaks through the speaker so Jeff can hear you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kalilo from World Bank. Um, so, first of all, the project is very impressive and thank you for sharing it with us. Um, so, it, it, it focuses on uh, unifying uh, publications uh, per authors. Could, it, could this tool be analogous or, or tweaked in a way that could also um, collect uh, metrics or data from different places per publication? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, we have that uh, sort of uh, infrastructure set up uh, to do all that you just talked about. And we strictly scoped it based on the center and institute and office research requirement. At this point in time, uh, they're only interested in the publication numbers, right? But we can definitely pull in uh, impact factor, citations, and also uh, we are in conversation with office of research connecting to our funding data. Basically, all the proposal coming in, we can see how much I fi uh, funnel through the center and then see the scholar impact from those uh, proposals we have. Yeah, and also we, we, we have done some of that. We, we, we kind of stopped at more of the prototype stage at the, with, with our office of research paying most of the, the check for various sorts beyond, uh, especially for, for, for Jeff, who we have, have had as a consultant, they, they, they had kind of a big say in terms of how our, our scope was determined as first pass. Hi, John Dunn, Indiana University. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for sharing this. This is really... Uh, Interesting work. Um, I guess I have, I have two questions. One for 
one for you two and one maybe a, a broader question. The first is, uh, to what degree is PACE tied to the particular data sources that you're using in terms of its architecture versus being kind of extensible to other data sources to kind of feed the, the, um, uh, the, the citation data? And then secondly, uh, you know, you, I think actually one of you just observed this. There are a lot of institutions that have developed kind of parts of this sort of research information management, you know, tools to support uh, citation processing workflows in support of open access efforts in support of, you know, looking at, at research metrics and otherwise. Is there anywhere where these projects are getting together to kind of compare notes, share experiences, potentially share code and so on? There may be, and I may just not be aware of it, but if not, I think that would be extremely valuable. I think for the, the latter first, that's certainly our hope that, uh, especially today, can be the start of that conversation. Uh, we, we, we have kind of guesses around that, uh, but uh, like I think uh, a lot of things have been happening in the Wikidata community that are very interesting, that are complementary. Uh, you know, that, that also alludes a little bit to the portion of extensible. Uh, the, so it, it is built up at the moment so that uh, pulling in from any sources is possible to do. It takes some work to build in a uh, configuration, but it, it's been set up essentially to have the system ingest records that have been since harvested from various sources and, and, and what, it, what is expected is it's kind of pushed in in a standard normalized format. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is it pulls it in and, and it does an additional uh, call on the Crossref for DOI metadata, regardless of which source it came from, to then normalize and push those things together. Uh, the last six months has been a lot of time spending on kind of refining and normalizing that portion. Right, so, so you know, uh, I, I said uh, when we started is back in 2017, uh, when we test some of those vendor uh, API, we actually talked to our, our uh, vendors. Uh, some of those APIs are free, some of them are premium services we have to pay. Uh, I, I, just to be frank, I think they're more, more interested in selling us uh, products rather than actually thinking of this as a partnership. Because, there, because the reason we're doing this, there, there's a local metadata uh, really mapping your own institution or uh, sort of, uh, or structure, right? So that part you cannot pull it down from any of the database. They, they have a very good, uh, in terms of department information perhaps, but people, they're changing uh, institution, changing uh, focus. So those are the area the library really offer. We, we talk to the vendors saying, hey, we, we can be a partner, we'll share in that data to enrich your database, and that will benefit everyone. I, I, I don't think we, we talk to the right people. You know, the sales want to sell us as product rather than thinking this as a collaboration, okay? So well, with that said, though, uh, on campus, uh, if we think, uh, if, if, if you will, if there are phase three, phase four, beyond the office research, uh, there are very uh, good possibility to talk to the, uh, the faculty annual review uh, systems on campus already. And people are very interested in that, uh, particularly from the office uh, provost uh, perspective. They're really interested in that. Uh, we actually love to having our faculty to be the first source of truth <laughs> coming in through their sort of annual reports, right? So there are definitely ways we can connect. Uh, uh, I, I do think the, uh, the point we're trying to make is somewhere on campus where the, ven the vendor, they have to understand how to map more closely to what the campus need. In this case, particularly from the lens of Center and Institute, a lot of vendor uh, databases, they don't have it. Another problem would be if you think about the, uh, the discipline they cover, there's no single source of, ven of vendor solution can cover all the scholarship output. Someone has to do that job uh, for, for, the, for the university. Uh, this is really exciting to see, thank you. Uh, the, uh, Tom Kramer from Stanford, hey Jeff, nice to see you. Um, uh, also two questions, uh, so one, we've done, we have very similar um, kind of uh, set of scripts and processes that we're, we've been piecing together, uh, so it's, it's really great to see how well you've packaged this and presented it especially to staff at institutes. Um, I'm wondering, similar to John, have you found that certain sources are better than others? We've spent a fair amount of time comparing um, Scopus, Web of Science, Dimensions in particular, 
uh, ORCID and Crossref and uh, trying to figure out where the cost benefit is of expanding sources versus the additional noise. We have not found that deduplication using DOIs to be a panacea because uh, different databases have more or fewer DOIs. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And the second question is, um, this is really around the, um, you're presenting around the Institute's use case. Uh, the, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, campus profiles? Yeah, and kind of speaking to the, the sources first, um, I don't know if, yeah, are you able to switch to the slides view real quick, uh, our friend over at the desk there? Oh, do I, I switch it? Okay, let me see what I can do here. Oh, I think I have to go out of full screen for Jeff. That will do it. It's slow to respond. Yeah, well, uh, Rick's pulling out the, the slide. Uh, from, the, from the campus perspective, you know, this is very progressive for, for our campus. There's no coordinated effort about the uh, general uh, faculty profiles yet. So this is really the, the first case uh, surface as an interest. Uh, but again, Tom, you know, from our pr perspective, if they want to go into a more general uh, sort of profile, we have the authors here. We, we have a very high confidence. We can definitely add more layers or more or lenses through uh, colleges, through department, or, or even for individuals. Uh, it, it's just there, it's just the need is not quite coordinated through the campus yet. Well, I'm gonna stop fumbling and just yeah. try to speak to it. Yeah, so th the, th uh, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just that's, that's really where, where we are, yeah. So, so in terms of ones that were really good, PubMed, we found was probably the best uh, in terms of API, uh, ease of use, as well as coverage. Uh, another one, so it's very interesting in terms of which is, it's, a, it's really kind of a little bit of best of breed where uh, we had a set of centers that, you know, they publish more in conference proceedings versus uh, a particular journal. So we had to have some sources that were looking at that. And we were originally looking at Google Scholar and we were kind of approaching that very cautiously in terms of what legally we were able to do. And we stumbled upon Semantic Scholar as something that was a very comparable and, and it's extremely similar to Microsoft Academic Graph, if you're familiar with that, one that is being discontinued. And at we more fortuitously, we were looking at this when we already knew about the discontinuation of Academic Graph. We were ready to jump onto that, but then discovered Semantic Scholar, something that has very good conference paper coverage, preprint coverage. Uh, and then, you know, Web of Science and Scopus, they have, you know, very similar, as you know, coverage of a lot of uh, STEM-oriented things. Uh, you know, Scopus uh, has probably a, it, it's, it really just depends on the discipline, really, about which one uh, is best. And then Crossref really ended up providing a nice catch-all feature, but that was, that was one of the thing that I was alluding to earlier, where Crossref would often return 10,000 results, and we would actually not accept that amount of results at that point in time because it was diminishing returns in terms of what could be sifted through. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it was more productive to focus on a different source for that particular author. So, so when we do a query of Crossref, we do a limit. If the results returned are less than 1,000, we take them and use them. If they're greater, we ignore. And I'll, I'll give chan Jeff a chance Jeff, to, yeah, to yeah. speak as well here. <laughs> and there's anything you want to add? Yeah, this is the, you know, one of the big challenges in metadata is this affiliation uh, stuff, especially when you get to the center department level um, we're right now applying a set of, of heuristics that's giving us qu quite good results, and, and they're, they're fairly simple overall, uh, but that set of rules that generates the confidence is um, based on heuristics. You can take that further, but as Rick said, it's, it's, it's also a question of diminishing returns. Uh, uh, what is the benefit of having you know, this brilliant AI sweeping things when really um, uh, we can apply a set of fairly simple heuristics um, uh, and, and human, human insight. Um, as far as the sources go, um, we're going to get different sources that have different benefits, uh, like Rick was saying about Semantic Scholar and preprints and, and conference papers. And so what, what we're thinking about is sort of this modular way to apply heuristics or apply learning, if, it, if it, that's what it takes, to different sources to get those results in the end, though, passing that to the human and then, and then learning from that, figuring out do we need such complexity on the front end there 
or is this something where we could just have these thresholds and cutoffs? I think one last thing to, to mention while we have Jeff on. So a lot of our, Jeff, Jeff and I had worked on the SHARE project in the past, as you may be aware. So a lot of our history in that project has informed how we have approached various things within this project, where with SHARE, it was kind of approaching things from a very broad perspective. And this was a different uh, approach where we were focusing first on a local problem versus trying to tackle the large at, at first. So it's, it's been interesting kind of being a part of both of those types of experiences. I think it's uh, at 11. Uh, maybe people want to come in for another session here. Maybe one, one last question. We'd definitely love to show you more about how the tool works. Uh, you know, talk to us. Yeah. Yes, and definitely want to hear about uh, collaborations. We're, we're right. really keen on finding out what more we could do with others. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you.